In this video, we are going to start our discussion on graph transformations. Graph transformations are operations that we perform on a function that leads to a certain change in the graph. There are two main types of transformations, shifts and scales. Shifts move a graph in some direction, and scales stretches or compresses a graph in some way. This video will be an introduction to shifts. We'll look at some examples of shifting and generalize what we observe. In our example here, let's graph the function f of x equals x squared. And what we want to do is we want to compare it with the graph of y equals f of x plus 2 and y equals f of x minus 2. So our goal in this example is to understand what adding 2 to our function does and what subtracting 2 from our function does. First, let's graph our function f. So let's start by making a table of values for f. Instead of creating our table vertically like we normally do, this time we'll make our table horizontally. The x values that we're going to look at are the x values from negative 2 all the way to 2. And let's find the corresponding outputs to get the y values. So when we plug in negative 2 into our function, the output is negative 2 squared, or 4. When we plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared gives us positive 1. When x is 0, 0 squared gives me 0. When x is 1, 1 squared gives me 1. And then lastly, when we plug in 2, 2 squared gives me 4. Let's plot our points. We have negative 2, comma, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, comma, 1, and 2, comma, 4. Connecting these points, we get our graph. So here, this is the graph of y equals x squared. Now, what we want to do is compare this with the graph of y equals f of x plus 2. So in this case, that's going to be y equals x squared plus 2. Let's make a table of values for this equation to help us draw its graph. Again, we'll look at the x values from negative 2 all the way to 2. And let's compute the y values. When we plug in x equals negative 2, we have negative 2 squared plus 2 which gives us 4 plus 2, or 6. If we plug in x equals negative 1, we have negative 1 squared plus 2, which gives us 1 plus 2, or 3. If we plug in x equals 0, we have 0 squared plus 2, which gives us 0 plus 2, or just 2. If we plug in x equals 1, we have 1 squared plus 2, which gives us 3. And lastly, if we plug in x equals 2, we have 2 squared plus 2, that's 4 plus 2, which gives us 6. Now, if we compare our two table of values, what you might notice is that all of the y values here are increased by 2 when we look at this blue table. Before, the original function had y values 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. Now, with the additional plus 2, our y values are 6, 3, 2, 3, and 6. Now let's plot these points to see the effect. We have negative 2, comma, 6. We have negative 1, comma, 3. 0, comma, 2. 1, comma, 3. And 2, comma, 6. Connecting these points, we get the following graph. So this here is the graph of y equals x squared plus 2. We see here that our blue graph is essentially my purple graph moved up two units. We say that this is a shift up two units, and that's essentially what this plus two to my function is doing. Now let's look at graphing the equation y equals f of x minus two. So for our particular function here, that's y equals x squared minus two. Again, we'll make a table of values to help us draw this graph. Let's look at the x values from negative 2 all the way to 2. So this time we're working with the equation y equals x squared minus 2. So plugging in x equals negative 2, 
we have negative 2 squared minus 2, so that's 4 minus 2, or 2. If we plug in x equals negative 1, we have negative 1 squared minus 2, so that's positive 1 minus 2, which gives us negative 1. If we plug in x equals 0, we have 0 squared minus 2, so that's 0 minus 2, or negative 2. If we plug in x equals 1, we have 1 squared minus 2, so that's negative 1. If we plug in 2, we have 2 squared minus 2, which is 4 minus 2, which is 2. Now, if we compare our red table of values here with the original purple table of values, we see that the y values are all decreased by 2. Originally, the y values were 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. Now, in this new table, they are 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, and 2. Let's now plot these points and draw our graph. We have the point negative 2, comma 2, negative 1, comma negative 1, 0, comma negative 2, 1, comma negative 1, and 2, comma 2. Connecting these points, we get the following graph. So this here is the graph of y equals x squared minus 2. We see that our red graph is essentially our purple graph moved down two units. We call this a shift down two units, and that's what this minus two is doing. So from our examples here, we've observed the following. If you have your function and you add some number to it, the effect of it is that you'll shift your graph up c units. On the other hand, if you take your function and you subtract c, what that does is it shifts your graph down C units. These are what we call vertical shifts. In our next example, we're going to do something similar. We're going to look at the x squared function, and we're going to add and subtract 2, but in a different spot. Just like before, we want to look at the graph of f of x equals x squared, but this time we want to compare it with the graph of y equals f of x plus 2 and y equals f of x minus 2. This time the plus 2 and the minus 2 are done within the parentheses which means these are operations done to the input. So let's start off by looking at y equals f of x plus 2. To evaluate f of x plus 2 we want to take the x in our original formula and replace it with x plus 2. So we're looking at the equation y equals, in parentheses, x plus 2 squared. Now since this plus 2 is being done in the input, I expect that this operation will affect our x values. So we're going to make our table a little bit differently than how we typically make it. Because we want to compare this with the original function, let's set our y values to be the same as the original. So let's use 4, 1, 0, 1, 4 as the y values for our table. What we'll want to do is try to figure out the x values that are needed to get these y values. So for example, I can start with this y value 0. I want to think to myself, what do I need to plug in for x so that we get 0 as the y value? Well, if we plug in x equals negative 2, the negative 2 plus 2 gives us 0, and then 0 squared gives me y equals 0. So the x value needed to get 0 as the y value would be negative 2. Next, I want to think to myself, what x values do I need to plug in so that I get 1 as the corresponding y value? So again, we want to think to ourselves, what can we plug in for x here so that when we add 2 and square the result, we get y equals 1? Well, there are going to be two choices here. For example, I can plug in x equals negative 3, because negative 3 plus 2 gives us negative 1, and then negative 1 squared will be positive 1. So negative 3 is one of my choices. Another choice for our x value would be x equals negative 1, because if we do negative 1 plus 2, that gives me positive 1, and then if I square it, positive 1 squared is still 1. So negative 1 is another option that will give me y equals 1. Now let's think about what x values we can plug in so that we get 4 as the corresponding y value. 
again, there's going to be two choices. We want to think to ourselves, what number can I plug in here so that when I add 2 and square the result, we get 4 as the y value? One of those options would be x equals negative 4, because negative 4 plus 2 gives us negative 2, and when we square it, we get positive 4. So in our table, we can fill in negative 4 as one of my choices. Another choice would be x equals 0, because 0 plus 2 is 2, then 2 squared gives us 4. So x equals 0 would also give me y equals 4. So these here are the x values that we need so that we end up with 4, 1, 0, 1, 4 as the y values. Now if we compare this blue table with our original purple table, we notice that all of the x values are decreased by 2. The original x values were negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now in this new table, they are negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 0. Let's now plot these points and draw our graph. We have negative 4, comma 4, negative 3, comma 1, negative 2 comma 0, negative 1 comma 1, and 0 comma 4. Connecting these points, we get the following graph. So this is the graph of y equals, in parentheses, x plus 2 squared. When we compare the purple graph with our blue graph, we see that our blue graph is essentially our original purple graph moved to the left two units. We call this a shift left two units, and that's the effect that this plus two to our input has. Now let's consider the equation y equals f of x minus two. To evaluate f of x minus two, we take the x from our original equation and we replace it with x minus two. So our equation here is y equals in parentheses x minus two squared. Just like before, because this minus 2 is done in the input, we expect that our x values will be modified in some way. So when we make our table of values, if we want to compare this with the original function, let's keep the y values the same. Let's use 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. And our goal would be to come up with the x values so that we get these y values here. Let's start by thinking to ourselves, what can we plug in for x here so that we get 0 as the output? Well, we can plug in x equals 2, because 2 minus 2 gives us 0, and then 0 squared will give me 0. So when I plug in 2, we get the y value 0. Now, let's think, what can we plug in for x so that we get 1 as the y value? We need to find a number for x so that when we subtract 2, and then square the result, we get 1 as the result. Well, there's going to be two choices. One choice would be x equals 1, because 1 minus 2 would be negative 1, and when we square it, we get positive 1. So when we plug in x equals 1, we get the corresponding y value 1. Another option would be x equals 3, because if we do 3 minus 2, that's going to give me positive 1. And then when we square it, positive 1 squared will give me 1 again. So plugging in x equals 3 will also give me y equals 1. Now let's try to find the x values that will give me 4 as the corresponding y value. One option would be x equals 0, because 0 minus 2 would be negative 2. Negative 2 squared gives us positive 4. So when x is 0, the corresponding y value is 4. Another option is if x is equal to 4, because 4 minus 2 gives us 2, then 2 squared gives us 4 again. So when we plug in x equals 4, we get y equals 4. Now when we compare this table of values with our original table of values, we'll notice that all of the x values are increased by 2. Originally, they were negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now they are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's plot these points and draw our graph. First, we have 0, 4, then 1, 1, 2, 0, 
three comma one and four comma four. Connecting these points, we get the following graph. So this here is y equals in parentheses x minus two squared. When we compare this red graph to our original purple graph, we see that our graph is moved to the right two units. We call this a shift right two units, and that's what this minus two to our input is doing. From our examples, we observe that if we replace our input x with x plus c, this leads to a shift left c units in our graph. On the other hand, if we replace our input x with x minus c, this leads to a shift right c units in our graph. These transformations are what we call horizontal shifts. So in this video, we learned about vertical and horizontal shifts. For shifts, we either add or subtract a number, and that leads to the graph being moved in some direction. In our next video, we'll talk about scales.